Got some good ones in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, welcome to another PNW Best Life video. Today we're talking about crabbing in anticipation of the crab opener in Puget Sound. <laughs> I think there's some keepers in there. Uh, I think so. <laughs> Giving you some tips, helping you have a good experience getting out on the water, getting your crab, and uh, hopefully uh, you learn something and are mildly entertained. Crabbing is about to open in Puget Sound uh, for several marine areas and I'm here to talk to you about some crabbing gear. Help you be successful on the water, Puget Sound crabbing year 2022. Let's start with uh, the crab pots, right? I'm gonna show you a couple different types here. All right, let's start with the most basic. I, I think this is, uh, should be your go-to crab pot uh, for the Puget Sound. It's probably gonna cost, you know, 35 bucks, 40 bucks, something pretty cheap. And you know, the key with crab pots is just don't overthink it. You don't need to spend a ton of money on crab pots. Save that money for other purchases. So this crab pot is a, it's a, it's a folding style pot, right? It comes flat and you, you, you assemble it uh, on these edges here. You should always add weight to your crab pots. Every year there's hundreds uh, of derelict crab pots, maybe more floating around the Puget Sound because people didn't weight them. They get on these, Facebook groups or message boards and complain about pot thieves and there are pot thieves out there but a lot of times people complaining about pot thieves are just people who have didn't weight their pots big negative tides uh, like what we've got in the opener right we got a big minus uh, tide in the afternoon that's going to create a lot of current movement a lot of a lot of ebb tide movement and people are going to lose pots because they didn't weight them here's what I think is the best way to weight your pots is you buy one of these cheap bricks uh, from Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, and you get get a masonry bit, and you just you just drill out the center, and you use a zip tie and attach uh, weights to them. I got a couple weights in here. This pot's gonna gonna sit flat on the bottom. It's not gonna go anywhere. Um, all right, let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk about your uh, your harness. So you can pick these up pretty much any sporting goods store, or uh, the links will drop drop in on Amazon. Right, a clip. Clip it in place on each side of your crab pot. And over here, I've got a, a, a quick connect because I want to uh, attach this, um, this C link. Now, both of these have seen a lot of time in salt water. Uh, no sign of corrosion because they're stainless steel. Very important to use stainless steel. If you don't use stainless steel, you'll get maybe a month out of them before you can, uh, they'll, just, they'll just fall apart on you and you won't be able to un, un, uh, unscrew them, unhook them. Uh, just corrosion will totally destroy um, destroy your gear. I really like using these uh, C-Links. Uh, you can find them a few different places. Um, they're made by Bomac SMI, a little bit more niche gear. Um, and here's why. Different uh, line management system when I'm crabbing, especially deeper water. I like to use this quarter inch lead core line. And this is my, this is my connecting point here. All right, so you see here, uh, why I like the C-Link is it's very easy to uh, connect this disc and it's going to hold and it's very easy to disconnect your gear and do it on both ends. So one of the other things having C-Links is going to help you do is uh, connect multiple shots of line together. Let's say uh, you, you change your mind, the spots you want to crab 50 to 80 feet, they're all either uh, taken up by other crab gear, or maybe those spots aren't producing, it's a little bit later in the summer, and you want to crab at 100 feet, 120 feet, well, with sea links on both ends of your 100 feet line, uh, you can quickly throw another 100 feet on there and uh, crab deeper depths with the same, all the same gear. Uh, works out really well. In fact, in the summertime, especially later in the summer, a lot of times the deeper water longer soaks. You often gotta soak longer or have really good broadcast bait. Um, are going to produce more than those uh, earlier summer shallow spots that tend to get tend to get crabbed out pretty pretty quickly after the first um, after the first week or two. So, all right, here's another style crab pot I want to show you. And difference in difference in this crab pot is it's uh, it, it it costs a little bit more. So it's it's probably closer to 100 bucks. Uh, I've again added weight this time in the form of the uh, the home gym. Uh, uh, barbell here, just added 10 pounds, um, and a uh, little bit different setup here with regards to the float system, just to, to show you, again, 
Uh, I've got the uh, I've got the harness on here, but my float system, uh, it's all it's thicker, thicker line, right? It's quite a bit thicker than than the stuff I got on the hose reel. <clears throat> here, I'll show them show them together. Thicker line, and this doesn't tangle as well. There's a hundred feet of rope. This kind of uh, this kind of what I started with when I was first out here crabbing. It just doesn't it doesn't tangle it uh, as easily. And you can throw it all in the trap. Have your have your buoy. I still have a sea link on here because I may want to uh, extend the line on this um, and, and crab a little deeper with this pot as well. And uh, and so it works. It, it's got a little bit different approach to bait. So in this case, uh, you know I've got a bait uh, uh, tunnel in the middle of the pot. You know I can add a bait in there. Um, I can add a broadcast bait barrel like you would use for shrimping. Uh, I, I can add you know something like something like this in the pot as well, uh, which is a, sort of a bait mesh bag, right? I can throw this in here, secure it as another way to, um, to, to have more bait in the pot. You know, just to show you, just to show you real quick, on the other style pot, the, um, you know, there's, there's no bait tunnel in it, and that's okay, because you just get one of these bait mesh bags, right? And you can, you stuff it with bait, you know, salmon carcass, chicken, been marinating, whatever. You stick it in the middle, and um, and you know you're good to go. Uh, there's entr entrances for the pot on each on each side. Uh, this side will close. It's important to secure this bait mesh bag uh, as close to the center of your pot as you can get it. Uh, if you can imagine, these crab are going to come in here, right, and they're going to, uh, you know, they're going to go right to where the bait mesh bag is. You want to get as many uh, keeper size dungeons crab in here as you can. And that'll be a challenge if you put the bait bag right next to this opening that could sit right here with the opening open and munch away on your bait and kind of keep coming in and out. Because this only closes if they come in, right? And then they can't get out. It doesn't open this way. It only opens that way. So, all right, so let's talk about buoys real quick. So, uh, buoys of the red and white type are required uh, by law for your for your crabbing uh, you also need to have your name uh, permanent marker uh, cell phone number address preferable on there as well uh, so let's talk about bait there's probably four different baits I want to talk about today first of all the number one bait for crabbing uh, anywhere is in, in my book is gonna be uh, albacore tuna uh, shavings carcass uh, it's it's just it's outstanding. Uh, this is this is just supercharged crabbing bait. So oily, so um, uh, enticing to crab uh, to come into your pot and munch on that. So when we go out tuna fishing, we love to get those carcasses uh, or go buy whole uh, tuna. Uh, come off the boat, Westport, um, fillet them yourself, save the save the carcass. It's phenomenal, phenomenal bait. Um, Second and, and very close second, it's gotta be razor clams. You know, you go razor clam digging, uh, you have shavings and trimmings from the cleaning process, you're gonna have broken razor clams. Uh, all of that makes outstanding uh, crab bait. Number three, uh, and this is just a just an old standard, is your, your salmon carcass. Uh, what, what it, you know, you did a bad job on the filet, all that extra meat on that carcass is gonna uh, be great for crabbing. Um, very widely available, right? A lot of us are salmon fishermen. You have salmon carcasses in your freezer. You save it, you freeze it. This time to bring it out, use it for great, uh, great crab bait. Um, you know, if you catch a, a, a an ex, you know, a boot uh, salmon, you know, in the rivers in the fall, uh, you you know, sometimes you don't know like how good eating quality is till you actually till you actually keep it and and bonk it, and then you you know you cut it open and it's like, oh man, this is not this fish didn't cut very well. Uh, you know, save, uh, you know, save that fish. The, the, the flesh on that uh, are gonna, are gonna crab way better than any uh, carcass and uh, bring in a lot of crab, even a boot salmon flesh is gonna, it's gonna work really, really good. Uh, let's say you don't have any of that. You're just looking to get started. What the heck do you use? You hear about people using chicken, whatever. Go buy uh, some chicken drumsticks, some chicken thighs, whatever's cheapest. And, uh, and then marinate it in some special sauce. And I got some special sauce for you that's gonna help your chicken perform 
uh, like these other uh, just incredible, uh, incredible baits. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead, uh, give uh, subscribe to the channel. Lots more content coming on fishing, hunting, forging, everything in between. Uh, we're all about living the PNW best life here, which means uh, catching, killing, eating, and uh, and picking your your uh, your food here. So. All right, here we go. First one, the uh, the Pro Cure Crab and Shrimp Attractant Oil. I mean, I'm I'm not partial to Pro Cure. Really, any brand. You know, Potsky's got theirs too. They're you know, Potsky has theirs as well. Uh, all work fantastic. You know, marinate your chicken in this and uh, you're gonna see great results. You're gonna outfish the guy who just got store-bought chicken. Absolutely crab, we're gonna love to come into your pots with this. All right, so we talked about clams, right? Here's, here's another great uh, <laughs> marinade uh, for your chicken. Marinate it in clam juice. You just go pick this up at the grocery store. You know, they got canned versions of this as well. Little bits of clam there, clam juice. You marinate your chicken in this, and we're gonna be in business and doing really well. <clears throat> but here we go, we're not done yet. Look at this. You know what this is? Bloody tuna bait oil. Marinate, marinate your chicken in this. Uh, you're gonna be approaching effectiveness of the albacore tuna carcass um, if you get some you, you can use that in any bait uh, get some bloody tuna in there uh, let it soak into some bait maybe some shrimp pellets <clears throat> uh, let those bleed out uh, all of these will make great great uh, crab bait and you'll be you'll be on a road to success with Puget Sound crabbing before you know it with these approaches to bait all right so we got to talk some Navionics uh, usage here I'm showing you here Navionics app on your phone um, great great source for uh, for marine charts navigation as well as just uh, being able to do some research here on on where to crab right so uh, <clears throat> one of the classic uh, places to cra to look for good crabbing spots is I'm showing you Mar marine area 82 uh, right here this is the mouth of the Skykomish River all right, let me zoom out here. This is uh, up in uh, Skokom, or sorry, this is the mouth of the uh, Snohomish River. Skokomish goes into there. And see, this is Port of Everett, right? You come out here, you make a right, all this stuff right here. Look at this, you can see the depths up on this shelf. All of this will crab uh, really well uh, all summer long. And there's this, there's this um, deep drop off here in the deeper water, you you can drop your pots on the shit on here. You gotta be weighted or they'll slide down. See how steep that is? <clears throat> that 50, 70 feet of water <clears throat> with more with more crab line, longer lines. You can crab at the bottom of this. Uh, all these places are gonna hold crab uh, throughout the summer. So, uh, <clears throat> but you know, just before you're you know you're sitting sitting down having your coffee in the morning or late at night, uh, you got the TV on. Pull up your Navionics app. Look for some places like this. Uh, look for some places like this to, to do some research about where you're gonna crab. And let me let me show you another spot here. So, uh, you know, when you, when you're looking at for crabbing spots, this is this is Kingston, and you know, again, there's many places like this. I don't want to blow up one spot in Puget Sound. There's there's many places like this all over Puget Sound. Uh, this is uh, the Kingston area and Presidents Point. Um, You'll, you'll see people's crab pots all along here, um, as well as over here in Apple Tree Cove, right? All these little coves, bays, um, places out in front of fresh water like that mouth of the Snohomish I showed you. Uh, but you're looking for flat areas in the depth range 50 to, to, to 80, 80 feet are gonna have crab on them, right? Uh, you wanna avoid some of the sharp, sharp drop-offs like this maybe not as well right at the point there but look at, look at these look at these shallower areas more gradual drops uh, all of this <clears throat> even even over 100 feet all this is going to hold crab in general when it comes to Puget Sound crab I like to look for locations further north uh, you know there's more fresh water and crab larva and crab you know productivity uh, up north in the Puget Sound you typically get better crabbing 
You can do good crabbing in places like Marine Area 11 around Tacoma as well, but you're gonna find more Red Rock there than Dungeness, uh, although you will find Dungeness there in places uh, too. Uh, you just gotta have the right spots. I'm not gonna share those spots here, um, but there's so many places, you know, you go on the north end of Vashon, uh, off of Bainbridge, uh, you know, south of Elliott Bay, uh, north of Elliott Bay, you can keep working your way north uh, along the eastern shoreline. Uh, you know, I, all of these are gonna have great crabbing. Hood Canal, probably our favorite place to crab. Uh, great places to crab. You gotta be north of Aoc Point, uh, as normally has been the case in the past few years. Uh, but there's, there's great crabbing all over uh, Puget Sound. You, you, you just gotta get out there and at, worst comes to worst, look where everyone else is putting their pots, you know, stay at least 50 feet, 100 feet away from them and drop, uh, drop yours in the same area and uh, experiment, figure it out. You got good bait, you got good gear, you're gonna figure it out, you're gonna get your crab, no question about it. And there's nothing like that first crab feast of summer, fresh crab, uh, you gotta do it, you gotta have that experience. Uh, have a crab boil, maybe throw some shrimp in there you caught earlier and uh, just have a blast. Corn on the cob, oh my goodness, little bay seasoning. I'm getting, I'm getting excited, this is too, this is too much. Um, I need to go eat something. I come right there, see? Is it keeper? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This going to be six going. and a half. What? Six and a quarter, this one's six and a half. It's very important you handle crab the correct way with a thumb on the underside and your fingers hand on top. If you don't, this is what it looks like when you don't handle crab the correct way. All right, let's talk for a minute about crab strategy. So obviously one of the, one of the, um, one of the aspects of strategy is just, is just launching your boat and retrieving it. And, you know, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the launches around Puget Sound do not perform well on negative tides. And depending on your size of boat, type of boat, um, this, may be, uh, this may affect you in a big way. So you wanna, you wanna research your time on the water, off the water, uh, make sure the boat launch you're at and the tides are gonna support that. Uh, the tides also have a lot to do with how well your crab uh, pots and your bait fish uh, during the time they're soaking as well. Uh, you know, with lower uh, lower tidal movement, so so the difference between high and low or low and high being, being less, um, you know, say five, six feet, um, sometimes even less than that, are, are gonna be better tides for crabbing. So. Uh, you look at the opener on July 1st, places like Area 9 and 182, you know, you have uh, a really like small flood tide in the early, early morning, and then you have an ebb tide that takes you all the way down to a minus tide uh, in the early afternoon. And, and you know, this is, <clears throat> this is something for a lot of, a lot of folks out there. Uh, your plan should be uh, get on the water first thing in the morning, get those pots down, get off. Uh, the water by, you know, maybe 10, 10, 30 to avoid that rush back at the launch. You know, a bunch of people are going to be t trying to get back on the launch at noon and not have enough water and, and uh, you know, that can be a real problem. So uh, something, to, to, something to be aware of. Also, you know, most crab tend to enter your pots in the first hour your pot soaking. We've got a lot of video footage of dropping GoPros and crab pots. Uh, we see that a lot. Um, you know, this pot here was soaking for three and a half hours, but most of the crab activity was done in the first hour. And, uh, and, and so you're gonna, especially in these shallower areas, the, the, you know, the results you're gonna get are gonna happen in that first, uh, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. So, um, especially if you're crabbing in a new area, you're not confident in the results, maybe on the opener, you know, check your pots more often and then move them. Get them to a spot, if they're not producing, get them to a spot where they will produce. And uh, you know, it might, it, it might take you a couple soaks and you'll have your, have your limit of five, five Dungeness crab per person is typically the summer limit. And speaking of which. All right, last thing, super important to have your Puget Sound crab endorsement. You have a crab catch card that will look like this. And uh, even if you don't catch any crab, you're gonna need to turn this in. Even if you don't go crabbing, you're gonna turn this in or, or uh, fill it out online. Uh, by the end of the season, otherwise you'll you'll be on the hook for a small fee. Uh, the next time you try to buy a Puget Sound crab endorsement, uh, this is super super important uh, for uh, being legal out there. Summer crabbing, need your crab catch card, Puget Sound endorsement. Um, when the winter season is announced, you'll be able to get um, get the winter version of this for free, uh, usually. Uh, but uh, get, get started on the right foot, get this thing. Um, 
so you're all good to go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, give us a give us a like, drop us a comment, ask a question. If something on here uh, wasn't uh, wasn't very clear, or you want some more tips, uh, you can give us a follow on uh, on Facebook PNW, uh, PNW Best Life the page there, Instagram Pacific NW Best Life. Um, definitely can uh, you know DM me. I I generally respond and I try to get back to people and help people out. So. Be safe out there, have a great time. Uh, a lot of first time boaters will be on the water. Uh, try to be courteous, respectful, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can all have a great, great crabbing season out there. Uh, take care, Till next time.